LLC Crystal Edge Technology screens. We have a new company coming up soon. Can't talk too much about that. My camera's going to look at here. And that technology is going to be involving uh, the TV projection screen technology that we're working on. Now, there's a lot of stuff that I had to go through to figure out how this is going to be done, how we were going to ship this. We have the formula. That's not a problem. The problem would be the surface. This would be the problem. The surface makes and breaks everything. So whether we can ship this thing, how much money would it cost to ship it, how heavy will it be, will it be fragile, is this going to be hard for the customer to assemble and set up? There's a whole lot of stuff that comes up. Glass, which I would love to do, but it's extremely expensive. It's going to be virtually impossible for a customer to set up a screen of that magnitude to a wall if they drop it or anything, there could be serious precautions of this happening. This could cause a lot of trouble for the company, which means we'd have tons of complaints on these things. All kinds of things could go wrong. And if we make it tamper-proof, shatter-proof, even with tamper-proof glass, it still cracks. It's glass. It's still going to crack. It's going to disrupt the picture image. It's going to be the same thing as a plasma TV. It's going to have the same kind of problem with TV. A plexiglass surface, a flexible surface, which it would have to be, because due to the fact that if it's not flexible, that means we are going to be paying a lot of money in freight. I don't like to charge my customers shipping. We all know that. I've never charged for shipping. I don't like doing it because I figure if the customer already invests in our company and the product, I really don't like charging them shipping costs too. And this would be extremely expensive to do. So I left some information at the bottom, some things I got a chance to think about over the weekend about how we want to go about designing this thing. We want the surface to be wallpaper. That's definitely a yes. Number one, because the wallpaper surface and experience I've had with wallpaper surface. Let me show you something really quick while we're doing this. There we go. So while we have a the wallpaper surface is better because number one, it's flexible. It's something we can put into a shipping tube and ship it anywhere you want. It doesn't cost us a ton of money because I've had experience of using this um, surface before. On top of that, um, it's very easy to assemble. The customer has no tools involved whatsoever. No pulling out frames and figuring out instructions and all that stuff. You do fixed frame screens, you just connect it to your wall. Done. When you're finished with it, you can roll it up and stick it in the tube. I was able to store one and I've shipped them from A to B. Like I'll take one with me and roll it up and bring it back out. And I don't have that issue at the end of the day. Another thing I had to go through when I started doing the wallpaper surface is I had to get a wallpaper surface that basically that every time we took it out of the roll, it would lay perfectly flat. Because the last thing you want is for the edges to be curving up. If the edges curve up, what happens is when you lay it against the wall, that just transfer those curves in the middle of the screen, which is going to have a ripple effect. And that does not work if you're using ultra short throw application, because ultra short throws require super flat surfaces in order to do so. I'm going to turn my bike down a little bit. So this right here is the glass. This is basically the formula that's coded to it. Is it going to basically uh, downgrade the material? No, it's not. It's not at all. The reason why the glass was chosen because this was supposed to be designed to be a front and rear technology that we're using for something and then realized that the front projection applications were insane, insanely amazing. And I said, you know what? This would make a great front projection. So we just stuck it with the glass. But no, we're right now, I'm going to be testing pretty soon a um, couple of uh, surfaces. I actually got one here. I can do the test on. Uh, we can always upgrade it to anything we want because, like I said, we have that capability to upgrade. As a matter of fact, there's an upgrade version for this technology. Um, so with that, I am going to be doing a 100-inch wallpaper for myself. Now, that's easy for me because when I move from here, guess what? I can just roll that thing up, slap it in the tube, and take it with me. Other than having a rigid piece of plexiglass, which I've moved screens that were already done, already done. As a matter of fact, my last place, I had a 126-inch elite screen and a 106, and I had to I had to move those suckers into a truck just as they were because mine this is already a painted surface. I can't take this thing apart. I had to move it exactly the same way I had it on the wall. That was not fun at all, period. So having a surface that I can roll up and stick into a tube, not worrying about the furniture's going to hit it or damage it or mess it up, yeah, that's a relief. And I went through that stress period already. I've done that before.
So moving a screen that's already painted and you got furniture back there behind there, even though you got to panic every time the truck moves, you got to fear that a drencher is going to hit this thing and damage your frame. Yeah, I've been through that. I know what that feels like. Don't want to do that ever again. So having the tubes, much easier. Now the size I'm going to start off with, 100 inches. I'm going to keep these a limited edition. When people want to sit there and get mad at me, like why in the world would you only make 20 of these a month? There's a reason why. A lot of thinking into this. Look, people, I do got a major contract coming up, but you have to understand, I'm 55 years old. I'll be 56 in September. I don't want the, and I've talked about this on camera before, I don't want the, the responsibility and stress behind it. It's a lot of stress running a smaller business. Imagine when it starts to expand and there's hundreds and thousands of these things coming out. I don't want this at all. I like my quiet life. It's peaceful. I make a few orders, I make some good money, and that's it for me. I don't have to have expensive cars, expensive jewelry, I don't have to basically furnish that lifestyle. It's not for me, it's not the kind of lifestyle I want. And even if I make that kind, have that kind of money to begin with, I still don't want it. I just want a simple life, that's it. I want to be able to make a certain amount and be happy. Just like somebody who runs an Etsy business. They make their own handmade things, they make a certain amount, and that's it and they're done. That's it. I'm making 20 of these a month. That's all. That's all I'm going to make. So, I don't know how this is going to work out with the contract, but I'm not doing all that. I'm just not. It's just too much to keep track of. And at the end of the day, business is business. Well, people don't understand business is business. Unless you've done what I've done, if you've worked with other companies and businesses and stuff, and you've seen the stuff that I've seen down through time of experience, I'm not saying that everybody's like that, but sometimes things change along the way, even in contracts, and things can get complicated and extremely, really, really murky. And I don't want to be in that. I want to be in a situation I can sit back on a nice farm, make myself maybe 20 of these, bring in a customized painter, because I'm not painting these myself, I'm actually hiring someone to help me with this. And they can basically come in and sh 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 coat these screens, we can pack them up a little small little business, like I like an old mom and pops, that's what I want. And we can ship these things out, and at the end of the day, when we're done our 20, we can just sit back and just watch the sunrise. That's it. That's what I want. I don't want a multi-million dollar corporation. I don't want this. I don't want that. And I'm still going to donate money to help people out at the end of the day. It doesn't make a difference. I'm big or small. I can still do it. I just don't want that level of responsibility. I don't want it. So for anybody else thinking that, oh, you know, with this technology, you're insane. No. What I want. I don't want all that. So I put some information below on what we're working on with the technology. Um, later on, we'll probably expand to some larger screens. Right now, I like the 106. Because 106 has a several options, which I've used them before. We can do 1610, 1690, 1610, and 235.1. Also, to a 100-inch screen, is a very comfortable screen at that. When I do my gaming in here, I'm not at a massive. These screens, I'm also having here, are huge. So I can jump up to maybe 140, 150-inch screen easy. When I game, I drop at 120. That's where I'm at, either 120 or 100 when I game. If you ever noticed, if you watched any of my demonstrations, you would notice that I've had screens in the other house throughout the entire environment. The one screen you would see me sitting on the most is the one that was sitting next to the windows. It was a 126 inch elite screen coated with that technology. And then I built my own screen and converted that to another 127 inch screen. That's what I designed. The 250 inch screens, 150 inch screens, I rarely ever use those things. I'm usually on the other screen, too much more comfortable for me. But that's my personal opinion, but that's how I feel. But I'm keeping it at 100, and then later on we'll switch over to 120. Now by doing this, this basically makes the price a lot cheaper than $3,000, and it probably would have been much higher than that with the glass. Much higher than that. Because again, the shipping and everything else. So I'm trying to keep it reasonable for everybody. And um, I got it to a point where if I make it a limited edition, I don't have to do that many, which is a thumbs up for me. It makes me happy at the end of the day. And there's not a lot of work involved. Again, that makes me happy at the end of the day. And I make, no, I make a good amount of money. So I'm good. I'm happy. You know, some people get in there because they want to buy the Bugattis and Lamborghinis and Aston Martins. Uh, what do I need that for? When you reach my era, my age, you start looking at things a little bit differently. Some people do, some people don't. I see things a little bit differently. I can't take it with me when I go. So, 
I'm going to kill myself working and making tons and tons and building an empire for what? For something I'm not going to take with me. Somebody else will enjoy what I'm long and going off this earth. So I'm just going to keep it simple. That's what I want to do. Because I can sit back and I can make a couple of screens and I can just chill for the rest of the day. That's what I do now. I do about three or four orders a day. I'm done. I don't have to do anything else for the rest of the day. I go to the park and sit down and watch the squirrels. That's what I can do. And that's what I'm going to do. That's my decision. I don't know how this is going to conflict with the contract. I don't know. I haven't signed it yet. But this is my decision. I'm going to stick with it. I'm happy with it. 100%. Right there, right there. I'm going to do, I'll get you a little office chair, so you can have one, I can have one. All right. That's pretty much all I wanted to say. And on top of that, I'm going to be cutting down on my videos by a lot. I know I say that all the time, but I love doing video demonstrations, but I am. I'm going to cut down on them by a lot. We don't need to be doing that many videos. What else are we... Are we trying to back up or prove at the end of the day? We've done so many video demonstrations, it's not even funny. About 9,000 something video demonstrations on tests and everything on there. You can name it the sun, so really anything else we really need to do, to tell you the truth, honestly. Let me see. I want to look at this real quick. Did I got the right one? Did I get that one? Relaxation. I think it's some pretty nice stuff on there. Now, because it'd be easier now to get this surface, and it's not going to be a headache to figure out exactly, even keep in mind, for even to ship that glass to us to prepare it is going to cost us money. So, you know, with that being said, that's just going to make it much easier. So I will have a 100 inch on display probably around the end of September, most likely. All right. Now, as I said before, this is going to make your ultra short throw projectors. If you have ultra short throw projectors, you can use long throw, you can use uh, short throw, you can use, uh, well, we don't know yet on what our lumen count is going to be. We don't know yet. We haven't put that requirement what the lumen count is going to be yet, so I have to wait on that one. We do know it's going to be ultra short throw compatible. It's something that has to be. Um, but as for supporting the unnamed brand projectors, no. I'm not supporting them. If you're going to take that risk and do it, then that's you. But we're not going to support them. So I would advise you getting the name brand projector if you're using this technology. As an ambient light rejection, well, this stuff is going to have Sun Killer embedded into it. So you've seen what that stuff does in the test. Tested that stuff on the, oh, the windows over and over again. That stuff can take in a lot of light. So that's going to be fantastic right from the, from the door. 720p owners, guess what? We're running 720p right now, so that means you don't have to go out and spend money for a very expensive projector in order to get your image to look nice. You can use a 720p projector. You know how cheap that's gonna be for you? Right now, we're not even running this in HDMI. We're running this in an HDMI adapter on VGA. So you can go out and buy a projector of VGA, 720p. You know how cheap that projector is? That's a projector under 50 bucks. You can run a little gas through the back of it, run your fire stick, and you're good to go. So you don't have to have an expensive 4K or 1080p projector. It's not required. This is my old, beat up, Chrissy LW401 projector. And this is what we're using in the back. We're running through VGA. There's the adapter down there. So we're not even running any HDMI ports. None of that. This is all coming through VGA through an adapter. So you don't even have to have a high signal HDMI in order to produce a very sharp image. Mind you, this technology is black. So it's gonna produce a 100% contrast level. And I can't express this enough that no gray screen, no gun metal, or no white screen has the capability to be able to do. So when you're watching Batman, or whatever you're watching, Star Wars, Anything involves heavy contrast, even if you're gaming, you're playing Call of Duty on a night mission, you're receiving a 100% black level, regardless of what your projector can produce for contrast capabilities. Let me show you the settings we have in the projector. You'll be under eco mode. You'll actually you'll be eco mode, period. Are we going to eco mode? 
make sure. We're running, let me see, we have brightness at eight, contrast at zero. We don't have any of the color any of that running because we can't, because once we put it in the VGA, all that cancels out. I wanna make sure. The lamps are gonna last forever. You don't need to burn them. Most people gotta burn lamps really high because you're in an environment with a lot of light. And you figure if you make the image brighter, everything else will come out brighter. Let's see, hey, eco mode. So run eco mode, I'm gonna change your eco mode. Watch this. That's eco mode, that's it. That's all the change. That's it. So you're not gonna run anything and, um, and be on eco mode. You're not gonna need it. A requirement, not going to be needed. It's going to be a great, it's going to be, it's going to be amazing for you all to short those players. I'll tell you why in today because, again, your projector, your projector is different from everybody else's projector. Ultra short throws are supposed to be designed like a TV style projection setup. That's what they were designed for. So you'll actually be to use your ultra short throw as what it was intended designed to be used. If you're in an ultra short throw projector or on an ultra short throw projector and you're in a really dark environment, guess what? You're not using it what it's designed to be used for. It's supposed to be in a fully lit environment with those things. That's why they have an ultra short throw, so you sit closer to the screen, you have less of a distance throw, you have less of your, what do you call it, your picture quality and lumen count dropping because you're sitting right up on top of the screen. And that gives you that kind of TV-like feeling. Like I have in the next room, I have a Sony in there at 140 inches, and we're in eco mode too in there. And I can watch movies and stuff like the fully lit environment on our paint technology. But that's how your ultra short though is supposed to react. If you're in an environment, you got one little window open, and that environment is dark, and we all know the apartment or house did not come that way. It was much brighter than that. So when I watch those demonstrations on, I'm not talking about one person, other ultra short though projector displays, we know the place they come looking like that. Who would move into an environment that's that dark? Who was the last person to live this Vampires? There you go. So it's much brighter than that. That environment has to be altered because if not, what happens is your contrast levels are the first thing you're going to wash out. Once the contrast levels go, color goes next. That's why they're stuck in those dark environments. On a projector that's designed to act like a TV. And with a two million to one, sorry, we're going to tell a bit. With two million to one contrast level, well, that's completely pointless because you will never get a chance to use it because the screen can't see black. I think some people feel that because the projector has a high contrast, and therefore the screen will have C100% black. No, that will never happen. Ever. Because you can't see black. If you can see black, Got a simple test for you, it's very simple. Turn on all your lights in your apartment or home, wherever you're gonna be at, and produce a star field. A black screen will see black whether the lights are on and off. If you have to turn the lights off to see black, then you don't have black. Star field screen saver. I get this in conversations all the time. I say, oh, I see black, I gotta, no, 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 no. Turn all your lights on and produce a star field because black's gonna see it either way. If your screen comes up gray, then you have a problem with your hands. That means it's not receiving black levels. That's how you know if you're receiving a 100% black level. If you have to be in the dark to get it, you don't have it. AK Desired Nature.
Where do we start? Venmo is now available for 13 to 17 year olds. This technology, when we get done with it, mine is still not at 100% yet. We're not even anywhere near close to perfecting it yet. It'll produce contrast so it looks way darker than this. Maintain incredible white level capabilities. And if you saw the demonstrations on that sun killer we had sticking in that window and everything's pushing back light and the screen was so generating, that's the ambient light projection that we're designing to embed into this screen. Okay, snow screen saver, snow cottage. Getting that from YouTube. And watch the transition. See that? It can produce an extremely high white level and yet produce some of the darkest blacks you've ever seen. That's what a screen is supposed to do. It has to be a transition. If you have to change your environment to fix the transition, then you don't have a proper screen. You should be able to do that in a fully lit environment with no problem. Without the need of high-end projectors to fix the problems, no high-end 4K laser machine, none of that. You don't need any of that. The problem is they keep making these projectors more and more advanced. The problem is the screens are not catching up to the technology of the projector. This is an old 2012 model. No one would touch this with a 10-foot pole, but look what it looks like on our technology compared to everybody else. guarantee you this. This technology here, just like the technology we have here and before us, will knock out any certified gunmetal screen. It won't be the touch of the technology. It will knock out any gray screen, any white screen, and eBay can go side by side with a TV without a problem. And the reason why is because the downfall of these screens is they don't produce black. They have to produce black. No projection screen can compare themselves to a TV. Virtually impossible because you have to have a 100% black level to do it. TVs can generate 100% black. Gunmetal technology is a dark gray screen. We develop, we make this stuff. I've actually have gunmetal technology that can knock out other gunmetal gun technology. So I can tell you from hands of experience of testing other gunmetal screens, again, you have to have 100% black. If there's anything better than getting your go-to order from McDonald's, it's getting it for less than me. I just find it baffling how I see people with um, phones, their phones, their VR systems, TV monitors, and all that stuff, 
that's completely jet black monitors. But yet they have a great projection screen. Even our gunmetal technology is so super dark that again, that technology can knock out other gunmetal technologies. You have to have that ultra darkness. You have to. And then on top of that, once you have that, you have to be to maintain a super high white level. Because that white level is extremely important in black technology. It gives the ability for the screen to be able to produce number one, a white level, and beautiful skin tones and beautiful colors. Color requires both contrast and white levels at the same time. You have to have a perfect balance. Now we will around probably getting ready for the 2024 new level the uh, dedicated black is not going anywhere. It's going to actually have an upgrade waiting for it. It's going to have an advanced upgrade to it. You think dedicated black technology is a big switch? You see, if we get done with, with that new Element 77, we're going to drop into that stuff. Do what it does. So this gives us the option to have paint on products and to have the uh, strings. When you turn to the side, see that slither of light you see right there pushing down, right there? That's what I'm looking for. Because TVs react that way. So if only problem with some monitors, when you go turn to the side, them things go completely dark on you. looking at the screen I think the screen looks much lighter it's not you see the light we have in the environment I did this with the gunmetal we had gunmetal screens downstairs we're testing with we these screens pushed all the way up to where these high fluorescent lights were and there are some people that were sadly mistaken that literally thought that screen was light that screen was not light that screen was light because it was that much light making contact with the screen same thing we have in here over top of my head right here we have LEDs these are LED lights these things are super bright. See all that light around the screen? This is how much light we have in the environment. So the reason why the screen looks lighter, because that's the light hitting that screen. It's absorbing it. Though we have our brightness down to next to nothing, we're in eco mode. We're at the lowest settings. 
run off a 720p projector and using a VGA adapter, that technology is able to produce a bright enough image. You can see all those beautiful skin tones and white levels and all that good stuff that you need to see at the end of the day. Everything you see on there that's black is reading 100% black. Right. So see, you can see a combination of white and black firing off at the same time. And this is going to be a great technology for our customers, it is. It's finally, you get a chance to see, well, you've been seeing it. With our screen paint technology, we've shown you our screen paint technology you can knock out a certified screen. We've been showing you that for years what your projector should be looking like. You're on a gray and white screen, you're not picking anything up. Garmetal is very expensive technology, but it does a heck of a lot better than a gray and white screen, but it's extremely expensive. And again, you missed, it, it, it overshot the point. You can't see contrast. Now, I see so many people not talking about that. They talk about colors and white levels. What about the black levels? not required. I've talked to a couple companies who say, well, the screen's not required to have a black, they're not required to have a black screen because the projector produces such a high contrast. I hate to say this, and this is going to make some people upset, but if you believe in that, you're a fool. Because I don't care how high your contrast level is, you will never get a white screen to produce a 100% black. The screen plays an amazing part to your projector. Your projector has the capability to show it. The screen has to have the ability to display it. And it has to do this in fully lit environments while you're doing this without having any form of disruption to the picture. So if you believe because you spent all this money for this heavy contrast level and this, that, and the other, then how come when I go on YouTube to look at these demonstrations, everybody's sitting in dark environments, colors are washed out, contrast is not pulling, and I'm watching a lot of light dodging. Powerful machine, poor screen. TCL, black and white. Getting that from YouTube. No, telling you that you have to have a projector with a really high contrast and this is going to fix it, it won't fix it. TCL 4K demonstration. Let's get the one. I wanted want the black and white. That's what I wanted. To show black and white levels at the same time. Ooh, what is this? Every time I see something on here, this thing looks exactly like if I put my phone up here, I'm gonna get a tablet and put up. You know what? I'm just buy a TV anyway. A TV anyway. It's the same thing. It's the same on my phone. Let me see. I've seen those demonstrations. They'll show you a TV next to a screen, but the sad thing about it is the TV will be in the same environment that a projector sits in. No, that's a TV. They don't sit in those kind of environments. They can be in fully different environments. TCL black and white 4K demonstration. Getting that from YouTube. What is the deal? I think we can't find that video. That video is dirty everywhere. Can't track that video down. That's weird. Let's try um, TCL. Hey, what's going on, guys? Today's video I'm going to be discussing what the issue is with your TCL television. We should be getting that black and white demonstration. Everything else is here except for that thing. Everything literally is here except for that. Wait a minute, this is what I'm gonna do. This is why it's not fine. Because it's literally saying TCL and it's putting four and then K. Clear that we gotta do this manually. Um, 
Industries. Go on with that demonstration. Use you any other time? Pops right up. Space. Okay. What the heck am I over here watching? My bear from speakers. I can hear him in the back. I don't think I'm watching a documentary. 4K. Alright, and says Congress. You know, I've got from showing a whole documentary. And that really kind of like hardened me. Whole book documentary just pop up. They're freaking nowhere. Excuse me. They removed it, which I don't know why they would. It's a pretty good demonstration. Doesn't make any sense. Here we go. My goodness, I had to go through all that to find one demonstration. So the reason why I wanted this demonstration so bad, because it shows the high white levels of this technology. And mind you, as you're looking at the screen, you're watching those black levels, that is 100% black you're picking up. Just like on our screen paints, 100% black. And it shows you how the technology can generate high white levels and contrast levels at the exact same time. Now, for someone who's wondering what happens if we put the projector in normal settings, the camera can't see it. The screen generates a ton of light. Imagine we have it a low, a very, very low set. We're way under factory settings. We put this thing on regular settings. Camera's gonna have a very difficult time reading it. When this thing reaches 100%, that camera won't be the register on it, just like a TV. Be available in 2024. We don't know where in 2024, but it will be available. Price will no longer be three thousand dollars because now the service you'll be using will make it a lot more easier for us to ship this product. Also, too, it will be not it won't be complicated for the customer to put up. Again, glass. That's going to be an issue. Now, see if we had it with in our area here. We could do the installments, but in state to state, that's not going to happen. That's just not going to happen. Now, that would take years to get to that point. That would take a while. But having it easy where the customer can actually set it up themselves, no tools, nothing requirement, and yet we will supply what you would need to actually connect it to the wall. The best thing about it, when you get done, you roll it up, put it into your uh, tube, because you want to customize tubes for them. Definitely not ship this thing in a box. So something can drop something on it and snap the screen. No. I want to go to a place to get customized tubes with the company's logos on them. So I can put them in the tubes. Nice little carrying case. And at 100 inches, it'll be completely portable. Which means I can take this screen down, throw it in my tube, take it over to my friend's house, connect it to the wall, and continue gaming. Enjoy the video demonstration. I gotta go. Got business to take care of today. Thank you for your time. And of course, we thank our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for blessing us with amazing technology. Gotta go and God bless.